Uh, good morning to you, Dr. Mela, and to the to your viewers at home. Um, and it couldn't be a perfect time, I think, for the healthcare workers to be, especially those who are deserving and those, who, especially those who are quite vulnerable, to be given a, a jab. Because remember, the Johnson and Johnson will take up to about 28 days for the for the vaccine to be effective. Mm. So we are very worried because if you remember how we got to the second wave, we were at these levels in terms of active cases. So that could well be a proverbial calm, you know, before the next wave, which we've been warned about already. So we think it's a perfect time, and we hope that the met the, the issue will be quite expedited to ensure that healthcare workers uh, do get vaccinated because they are the most vulnerable. Right. And it's quite logical that you start with them. The last time we had a conversation, you know, there were concerns around some of your members having questions around the vaccine, the efficacy, the safety, any side effects. Those were quite, you know, credible and, you know, validated questions and concerns. Since our last conversations, have those questions been answered? Have those concerns sort of been alleviated? Are you more at ease now um, to take this jab? Well, not entirely. Um, remember, previously we were talking about AstraZeneca and this time around we were talking about Johnson & Johnson. And, uh, of course, um, healthcare workers would always be anxious and would want to know as much as they can about the new uh, vaccine so that they themselves could be empowered with information so that they could make choices. But, of course, we do understand the difference now. And it's just that there's still a lot, still nothing needs to be done in terms of cascading information down to our healthcare workers. For instance, there is a question right now that our healthcare workers are not sure, and they are saying that they are being made guinea pigs. And we feel that the scientific terms, the scientific speak needs to be lowered a bit so that this could be explained very, very, very well and um, in a very simple way so that everybody could be able to understand. Because, for instance, if you hear these terms from scientists yourself, mm. um, that study, you will communicate that with the public. And some of us will hear it as a study. But if you get deeper into it and try to explain so that everybody could be at ease, that is not, a, they are not becoming guinea pigs. And they ask their clinical trials which have been done in eight countries. And that needs to be explained and just openness about it. Yeah, more transparency definitely needed here. But, but also at the same time, I see that the department um, is still giving consent to healthcare workers to say, if you would like to get the jab, all you have to do is register with the national you know, department website and, and, and at least you know, give consent that you would like to get that jab. And I'm seeing reports here, Mr. Delithaus, that at least around 28% of public healthcare workers have registered. That's roughly around you know, just a little bit over 350,000 healthcare workers who have already consented that they would like to take the jab. Have, have some of your members registered as yet, uh, including yourself? Have you registered, uh, you know, to, to, to get that jab? Mr. Delithazo, are you still with us? Oh, it seems like we have just lost Bongiseni Delithazo there from uh, Dinosa. Just reiterating that in as much as there's a lot more ease uh, with yes, you know, the vaccine registered. arriving. All right, are you still with us, Mrs. Delithazo? Yes, sorry, sorry, I got interrupted a bit. No um, I'm still with you. Yes, you were saying? Yeah, well, I was saying that, well, information still needs to be cascaded down to healthcare workers. Yes, many healthcare workers have registered, but there are still those who have not yet been informed, and they would obviously be, be taken through on how to register into the system. So it's important that communication is cascaded down to them, because healthcare workers are working in various settings. Some are in urban areas, and some are in rural areas, and it is in the best interest of every single one of them that they get opportunity. But most importantly, the information about the vaccine, because it is their interest. Mm. As the NOSA, we do not want to lose any healthcare worker anymore. Absolutely. And it has been proven that the PPE has not, is not reliant, so that we cannot be relied upon it. And UCT, SIU investigations have proven that. So if every, every process has been followed to ensure that we've got vaccine that is of integrity, we've got many healthcare workers who are vulnerable and they need to be safeguarded. As, as we're talking right now, I see on, on the screen there, South Africans can see the 17 centers with which, you know, healthcare workers will be receiving their jabs at around the country. And we understand from reports that only 80,000 doses will be coming into the country at least every two weeks. I mean, will this be sufficient? You've mentioned there that a lot of healthcare workers have not only tested positive for COVID-19, but, you know, some have also lost their lives, unfortunately and tragically. Do you think the timelines with which Johnson & Johnson is working alongside the Department to 
bring these doses in a span of two weeks in between doses and arrival of more vaccines is enough? Well, I did nervous. It was the number is quite um, low compared to the AstraZeneca that we got, which was one million um, the batch. And this time around, we're talking of eighty thousand. Uh, but if you look at it administratively, um, it is quite giving us hope because with the J Johnson and Johnson vaccine, it's a one jab, and administratively, it's a less of a burden to healthcare workers. But we hope that the process of bringing the vaccines is speeded up so that it they do get rich to healthcare facilities. Well, especially the 17 uh, vaccination sites, which is, as you mentioned. We do hope, of course, the coordination of healthcare workers into getting to such vaccination sites is something that must also be looked at because we've got healthcare workers who are staying very far and that, those, those, those processes need to be, yeah. to be clear so that they are also assisted as well. So I, agree also those, get, you know, I agree with those sentiments as far as logistics are concerned that they need to be quite thorough. But thank you so much, Pongiseni Dilitazo, for joining us.